This episode of Business Anatomy is brought to you by Benjamin Moore, Sherwin Williams, PPG, and Bear. My father and uncle told us that nobody's going to give you a break. They're actually going to be harder on you because you're my son and you're going to have to work harder than anybody else. Nothing was given to us. You know, we had to earn every bit of what we did. So we want to use a concrete material to fill in these rough profiles first. You might even be more than 100 mils, okay? If I was out there blasting and painting, I was doing it as good or better than everyone else who was out there doing it or I didn't progress to the next level. The best we could do is get a hybrid model that incorporates both. This wasn't gonna be a free ride. They wanted to make sure that we really had the desire and the passion to work in this industry and for the company, that it wasn't just we were being, you know, blessed because we were the owner's sons, but, you know, that we were earning our keep here. Before we came into the company full time, my brothers and I all went to college, uh, knowing that we were coming back into the company, applying what we learned to help elevate the business. Safety has always been a priority. It's always something that we've kept in mind. Um, when my brothers and I came on board, specifically Sam took over as the safety director we, we made a large leap. He was the one that was pushing our company to the next level. We had the approach that quality, safety is all a top-down approach. Safety is everything. Uh, we talk about it in every aspect of what we do. You know, having a culture of safety is one of the most important things that we can teach to our teams. Well, I'm gonna say that safety begins even before the first day that they're hired. We send them to the doctor and we let them know that the reason they're going to the doctor is to make sure that they can wear the proper respiratory protection like a respirator, um, that we do blood lead testing to make sure that they don't come in with high elevated blood levels because um, we're gonna be monitoring them throughout their career. We make sure that they don't have any drug or alcohol issues that we need to be aware of before they get started. We even do deep background checks. We wanna know who we're working with so we have a clear uh, baseline when they come on board, and then we train. As a new employee coming into this company, you know, one of the things you realize is that you don't just get some safety training and then get thrown out into the field. It is a process. It's actually a pretty long process to make sure that you understand everything that's going on. We train for two days they're in the conference room just watching safety videos and taking these comprehension tests at the end to make sure that they're absorbing the information. So we're sitting them down and we use some videos that the PCA has put together over the years, um, some that other safety agencies have put together. We use it as a tool, but it's not the only tool. Other tools are hands-on, other tools are lecture and discussion. I think that has a big impact because they know they're not just sitting in a class going through the motions. They're going to be quizzed on it. The primer is built differently. So you want to make sure that you're getting that primer on there. And then we train them in the shop before they even move on to the field. I was mind blown because I came on. I was like, you're in the shop for a week, just learning ins and outs of everything we do. To know the why, it's you can't tell someone to do something if you don't know why. Just none of the aggregate, none of the, none of the sand or the aggregate. Once I walked in the doors here at Alpine, they made me watch tons of videos. They made me take tests on safety. They forklift trained me. I passed that on to the new guys and make sure that they're aware of the dangers in the shop. The field is one thing. I mean, they're climbing water towers 150, 200 feet up. Very dangerous work but there are dangers in the shop as well, as far as forklifts, you know, skid steers, sandblasting, painting. So I try to preach that to them, that there are dangers here and you need to be aware of them and just be aware of your surroundings. And if you see something that doesn't look safe or you have something, you see something that just 
looks kind of suspect and is questionable, bring it to my attention and we will address it. This is a practice that any company can employ, um, but it starts day one. So our estimators are trained. They know how to get the job done. They know all of our productivity so they can estimate for labor. But then another big component is gonna be safety. What safety requirements are needed on the job site? So we're analyzing the job, not just on how long it's gonna take or how much it's gonna cost, but we're analyzing the job on, you know, what's gonna be involved from a safety perspective. How much time goes in to making sure that the scaffolding is set up properly or fall protection is taken into account or what PPE is necessary in order to make sure that everyone is safe working on that job. So all those things are thought out before we actually step foot on the job. Once it comes to fruition, we get the job, then it goes to our project managers. Now our project managers are briefed and we say, all right, here's all the aspects of the job. This is what we need. Get everything together. And then it goes to our safety manager who is gonna follow through and make sure that we have all the equipment on site and that our work plans and job hazard analysis are executed properly. So the job hazard analysis is really gonna look at each step of the job and what are the hazards and what protocols do we have in place. For us, technology plays a really important role. And one of the programs that we use that does a great job is a program called TrueQC. My environmental safety and quality manager will go out there and he'll have a checklist. And he's able to fill out the checklist. He's able to make notes on certain areas where he sees concerns. He's able to put pictures in. And then once he's done there for the day, he has the ability right from his iPad to email that out to the customer. They love things like that because it's us going out, auditing ourselves, uh, checking up on ourselves and proving to the customer, hey, you know, we're good, but you know what? We found a couple things and we're going to correct them. This is how we're going to do it. And they really appreciate that, especially when they have a safety person on their side who's looking at reviewing it. They're gonna spend a lot less time breaking our chops or coming and saying, well, what about this, what about that? Well, they've been watching it all along, what we've been doing. And generally, they're really impressed and that helps us get a lot more work moving forward. All right, so today we're at VMC. We're gonna be working on grinding the floors. Um, we have two of the big vacuums going, two of the big grinders going. What do we need to look out for? Our grinders generate dust. Um, I want everybody to have some form of respiratory protection um, while we're working with The ongoing grinders. training happens in a variety of ways. Toolbox trainings is probably your most common way to, to deal with that. So on our jobs, it's an everyday occurrence. We have a foreman that will go out there and he'll talk about uh, the job hazard analysis, that's a real big piece of what we do. Every job, we create a job hazard analysis that identifies the hazards that you may run into on that job, and they're picking one of the problems that they're going to deal with for that day. Safety in the flooring industry is a lot different than, you know, the other parts of Alpine. We're mainly on the ground, but we have just as many hazards. You know, we try to have engineering controls and then we use PPE as our last line of defense. We plan out the project in our heads and everything that could go wrong or safety, and then we, we take steps before it happens. 
there's the whole edge. If somebody's doing something where you are, just move and relocate yourself for the time being. And let's just be mindful that, you know, we're in their house right now and we need to keep them just as safe as us. So there's actually people working that are in that facility. So not only do we have to protect ourselves, but we also have to make sure that we're protecting other people. We need to make sure our vacuums are pulling the right negative air. We need to make sure our filters are clean, maintaining the, the bags properly and disposing of the material in a certain way. And then throughout the day, we're gonna be talking about it. So as the job is progressing, you know, are we hitting the mark with our safety, our quality, and our productivity? I think one thing that makes us unique is the type of projects that we work on. We were never one to shy away of a challenge. Um, and, you know, some of the most difficult projects are the most safety intense projects. Well, these are the kind of customers and companies that are willing to pay more for that level of safety and quality on a job. So it actually does become a value proposition for us from the standpoint of, you know, we're going out and finding customers that care about quality and safety. And it actually works out better for us because now we can do less work and still make the same amount of profit by doing a really good job at it and having a better crew, better management, just a better company all around and a better feel. We have jumped in with both feet to create a safety program that enables us to work on these projects which limits our competition and gives us a leg up. Some of the contractors that are out there feel as though if you train somebody too much, if you give them too much, they're only just going to go off and do their own thing. And they're fearful of the fact that it'll have a negative effect on their company because they'll start losing people, losing them to competitors, losing them to doing their own things. And it couldn't be quite the opposite that we have here. Uh, people love the idea of getting further educated on their trade if they really care about what they do. And they look at that as saying, I want to be with this company because they not only talk about it, but they're doing it. They're putting me through these classes. They're allowing me to become a better trained individual. Many of our employees have been here not just a few years, they've been here five, 15, some over 25 years. And I think a big reason that they can see a long-term career with our company is the fact that we invest in each of our teams. They understand that, you know, safety is not just a word that we use, that training isn't something that we're trying to just rush through. They're, they feel the passion as we speak about it. We use real job experiences that we've gone through that maybe didn't go right and use that to help teach and train our team so that we can move forward and do things properly every job. I think for the average contractor, the most important thing is the minute they bring someone onto their company, that they start talking about safety. The main things that you know you want to focus on if you're looking to um, improve your safety culture is number one, care about it, and make sure that the people working for you know that you care about it. To focus on it, so to make sure that you're out there doing training with your guys, that you're stopping the job every once in a while to say, hey, we need to use this as a learning experience and we need to take a look at this a little bit harder. Some contractors are not big enough to have their own in-house safety people to be able to go out to and listen to everything that's going on in the industry. But one of the good things that you can do is you can reach out to your insurance company. And when you talk to your agent, you can suggest to them, hey look, uh, there's some things that I'd like to do. I'd like to get a safety plan for my company. Is there something that the insurance company has that can help? Is there something that one of the industry associations like PCA has that I can get since I'm a member of PCA? Um, is there some information out there that can help me do a better job? Don't hesitate to be a leader in your company, a leader in your industry. Make sure that you're doing what you feel is the right thing. And if it costs a little bit more, you're gonna find out that it's worth it. That there are people out there that are willing to pay for people to be safe. 
that you don't always have to be the bottom dollar coming in and selling on just price alone. Sell on your professionalism, sell on your safety, on your quality.